Are you running out of tracks here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad? Or perhaps you've got an audio recorder track where the volume is just too low. Well, the merge function can fix both of these issues and do a whole bunch more. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my best six tips for using the merge function here in GarageBand iOS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And one of my favorite platforms for creating music is GarageBand right here on the iPhone or the iPad. And one of my favorite functions to use here in GarageBand is the merge function. It can let you bring your tracks together to free up some more space, but it can do a whole lot more than that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all of the different ways that I use merge to streamline my processes and my workflow here in GarageBand. Now, if you're new to the merge function here in GarageBand or you just need a bit of a refresher, to access the merge function, we tap on a track, then tap on the icon of the track and hit merge. And what merge lets us do is select one or more tracks, and these can be MIDI tracks or audio recorder tracks, and it will merge them together. Now, when we hit merge, it does a couple of things. It will back up this track, so it duplicates and backs up the song, so we have an original copy there, and then it merges the selected tracks together. It normalizes those, which means it increases the volume up so that it is at a standardized level, and then it puts all of those tracks on one merged track, which is on an audio recorder track, which we can see at the bottom of our screen. A couple of things to keep in mind when merging tracks. One is that when you merge a track that has effects, plugins, EQ, and panning on it, all of those different effects and plugins and panning are going to be written to your new merged track. Now there's a way to work around that, which we'll show you in this video, but keep in mind that if it does have plugins on it, those are gonna be written to your new track. The other thing to consider is if you've got a MIDI track or a virtual instrument track, you won't be able to edit the notes once you've merged. You'll notice that a merge track is always an audio recorder track which is just the waveform if you want to be able to edit the MIDI notes of a track you need to do that before you merge it so make sure that you've got your MIDI track sounding just the way you want it before you merge it into an audio recorder track Okay, let's dive into the actual tips here. Now, the first and most fundamental thing we can do with Merge is to literally merge two tracks into one. So let's do that with these two audio recorder tracks. Now, these are just two vocals in this Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song that I recorded a while ago. So let's just take a quick listen. Twinkle, twinkle, and if we look at these, you'll notice that this one is panned hard to the left, this one is panned hard to the right, and they already have all of the plugins and EQs defined. You can hear that in the sound. So as I mentioned, all of these will actually be written to our merged track, which is okay, as long as we know that these are the effects that we want. So to do this now, we tap on one of these tracks, tap on the microphone icon there, and hit merge. We now tap on the second lead vocal track here to make sure they're both selected, and once again, tap on the merge button, in the top right. It duplicates the song and now it's going to merge those two tracks into one audio recorder track, which we'll see here at the very bottom of our project. It's also normalized the track, which means it's increased the volume up to a consistent level, which is actually a good function, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. So you can see we've lost our two audio recorder tracks up here, and they're both merged down here into the bottom. If we solo and play this back now, you can hear that it's a lot louder, so you may need to adjust your volume there. If we go into the plugins and EQs here, there's nothing there. So it's panned right up the middle. There's no plugins and EQ. It's a dry audio recorder track. So that's the thing you really need to keep in mind if you are merging. And I'll show you another trick if we want to be able to adjust the effects afterwards. So let's now take a look at what the duplicating of this track has done. If we tap and go back to my songs, you'll see that every time you merge, and I've done a few here, it will make a copy of your track. So you can come in and delete those but I suggest keeping them for now until you're comfortable because once you merge a track, you lose all of that original track setting, especially if it's a MIDI track, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, I want to undo this merge, but you'll notice that I don't have an undo button there in the top right. This has already been saved in to this track, but no problem. This is where our duplicates come in handy. We'll just go back to my songs and we'll find the most recent duplicate copy. So that's this copy number four. We'll tap on that. And here you can see it's going to restore our track to exactly as it was before we merged. And now we can show you the next way that we can use the merge function. 
So I'll now show you how we can merge a track without including all of the effects. And it's quite simple to do. All we need to do is tap on the plus button here, add a new audio recorder track. Let's tap more sounds, make sure it's fun and clean and tap on the clean button there. And here's our new audio recorder track. We'll hit the track view to come back to our tracks view here. And now if we just grab our original track that has all of our effects on it, we're just going to copy the audio. So we're gonna tap on there, tap again, tap on copy, come to our new track, tap any Anywhere out here in the black space and tap paste. And there you go. If we solo this track now, it is just going to be our audio recorder track without any of those effects. Twinkle, twinkle, little creepy. So now what we can do is merge this track and it's going to merge just that audio. So if we tap on the icon here, tap on merge, this time we're just selecting the one track. We're going to hit merge again. It's going to do our duplicating. It's going to do our merging. It's going to do our normalizing. And then here is our merged track. And it doesn't have, if we play this back now, if we play this back solo now, twinkle little star. it is just our original audio without any of those effects, which we can then go in and add back in here. Or what we can actually do is copy this back over to our original track. So if you did want to then normalize it, for instance, if you just wanted to increase the volume and then paste it back to the original track, you can do the same function in reverse by just deleting this audio and replacing it with this audio. So you can make sure that you have one track that has your effects on it, one clean track, then you can shift your audio between those and make sure you get the right balance and mix for your track. Now, what about MIDI tracks? Well, we can merge MIDI tracks using the exact same method. We just tap on the track, tap on merge, select one or more of these tracks. And as I showed you at the start, they will merge into an audio recorder track, which means you're not gonna be able to then edit the MIDI sound. Now, there is another function which I cover in another video, which will be linked up the top and down below where we can select multiple MIDI tracks here and actually use the join function to join those together onto one MIDI track. So if you do wanna keep your MIDI note information, check that one out and you can use the join function. But why would you want to merge MIDI tracks into audio recorder tracks? Well, sometimes you've got a whole bunch of parts that you know are going to stay the same and you want to be able to merge those together to save on the number of tracks that you're going to be using. So let's say that you have a bunch of different percussion tracks or two different drum tracks like we have here. These two together are just doing this rhythm. So it's something very simple and very basic. If we didn't want two tracks taken up with that, we just tap, we go merge, we select these two and we merge them together into an audio recorder track. It does mean we can't then come back and edit them, but once you are happy with your MIDI notes and your MIDI tracks, merging them together can be a useful way to free up some more tracks to add some more music and sounds to your songs. Now we talked about this when we did our first merge here, but the other reason to use merge on an audio recorder track is when you have a very low volume like we have in this track here. So what you can do is merge the track just with itself and create a new track. Now you'll notice here it's all on one side. These are all on the left because this was a track that was panned hard left. And that just shows that stereo effect and the fact that the effects are baked in, which I showed you before. But what you will notice is that the waveform is a lot more standardized. So if you've got tracks that are really quiet, that are like this, and you wanna normalize those to increase the volume and make them easier to see the waveform, then using the merge function on an individual track could be a very cool way to do that. Another very cool use of the merge function is when you are using inter-app audio or audio unit plugins here in GarageBand. Now, if you're not familiar with inter-app audio or audio unit plugins, there's gonna be some videos down in the descriptions, but basically what this means is using a different app, a third-party app to record a sound into GarageBand. So here I have this clarinet sound. So at the moment it sounds like this. So that's cool, but the problem is if I wanted to share this with someone else that doesn't have this particular app, it's not gonna work. So I can't share this GarageBand project with someone else if they don't have the app that is playing with sound. So what do we do? Well, we merge it. And that means that we will be able to merge it into a standard audio recorder track. So let's just do our tap. We go merge. We select just this track and hit merge. It does our same familiar process of duplicating, merging, and normalizing our track. And then here, 
is our merged track. So now it's not pointing to that third party app. And this is good not only for when you're sharing with other users, but it can also reduce the amount of processing and the amount of those annoying optimizing performances you get and some of the glitches that you may experience. Because now it is just a standard audio recorder track. It's not having to jump in and use the other app to play back the audio. So a very cool way to make your tracks more compatible and to reduce the processing power so that you can play back your tracks. Time for our final tip here. This is probably one of my favorite uses of the merge function. It is a very cool little hack, and that is to use it to merge our FX track with one or more tracks. Now, if you've used FX before, you'll know that it applies these effects to the entire song. So there's no way to just apply FX to one or two of our tracks here, but using our friend the merge function, we can do it. So first of all, let's select the tracks here. We'll solo these two tracks. Let's just record a little FX pass on these tracks and then I'll show you how we can apply it to just our audio recorder tracks here. We could... Okay, you can see that little filter FX track has been recorded here, but the problem is as soon as we unsolo these, take a listen to what happens. So our effect suddenly goes onto all of those tracks, which is okay, but it's not actually what we want. So how do we fix this? Well, what we need to do is we need to merge these two tracks with this FX track. And how do we do that? Well, just using our standard process. We'll tap on one of these, we'll tap merge, we'll select these two vocal tracks. And now you'll notice that we can also select our FX track. Let's hit on merge here. It's gonna do our very familiar of duplicating. I'm gonna have 17 different copies of this song by the end of the these demos, it's gonna merge those together and then it's gonna normalize and throw those down onto a new track. So there it goes, it normalizes and here is our merged track. So now we don't need these effects anymore because they're actually baked in to this track. So if we just tap on here, let's delete these effects. Now let's just take a listen to this part of our vocal track. We could Pretty darn cool, yeah. And the cool thing is that all the rest of these tracks have not been affected by that FX. A very cool little hack and workaround that can get your effects onto an individual or just a selection of tracks. And there you go, some of my favorite uses of the merge function here in GarageBand iOS. Now, my question to you is, what did I miss? Have you got any other cool ways that we can use the merge function here in GarageBand? If you do, let me know down in the comments. You can also drop any comments, questions, or suggestions about this, or anything else audio or recording related down there as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to check out some more videos, including a playlist of videos all about the merge function and some more detail of some of the functions we went through in this video, check the links out below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.